gentlemen. Uh, next, we will go to Mr. Garcia for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Chairman Payne and uh, Chairman DeFazio for holding this very important uh, hearing on whether discrimination exists in federal passenger rail contracting. Congress recently passed historic infrastructure legislation that authorizes hundreds of billions of dollars in new infrastructure spending, including 66 billion for passenger and freight rail. As the US Department of uh, Transportation and state and local governments award contracts over the next few years to spend this historic amount of money, we must make sure that they include uh, disadvantaged business, business enterprises in those contracts, especially black, brown, and women-owned businesses. I want to thank our brave witnesses here today for sharing their harrowing and painful stories of how they face unjust discrimination as they sought to expand their contracting businesses. We must work in Congress to eliminate this insidious discrimination. Uh, a question for uh, Mr. Uh, Melvin Clark. Uh, in your testimony, you mentioned how you established an office in Chicago and have worked su successfully with the Chicago Transit Authority, most notably with respect to the rehabilitation of the Dan Ryan portion of the red line. Uh, why have you had success in getting contracts from CTA and what lessons can Congress take away from what CTA has implemented in terms of disadvantaged business enterprise programs and goals? Well, one of the factors that I feel uh, has made a difference uh, for us is that we did something and were set, ex accepted by the minority community. Uh, when we came in to work on that project, we, as I told you, we went to the, uh, the churches and the urban league and, and, and the city supported all of that. They saw people being hired and they saw uh, a positive difference being made in the community. And so we ended up becoming their contractor of choice, okay, because we were supported by, um, you know, more than just the fact that we can do the work, but that we were doing positive things. And we feel like, you know, our motto is to do well by doing good. And so uh, local local government made. Hello. Are you frozen? Hello. Yeah, we're having a bit of a technical difficulty here. We're okay. See if we can get Mr. Right. Garcia back up. Yeah. Okay. What we'll do here is um, go to the gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Carter, and we can come back um, to Mr. Garcia. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I apologize, but I think we all had the some technical. Yes, I can. Okay, um, you can continue. Um, you have about. Three minutes left. Oh, and it's not working. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Mr. Clark. All right. Um, are, are we continuing? Or? Yes. Okay, well, he was talking about how the community and local government have embraced us. Uh, and I'm saying, yes, they have. But in fact, when I was working on the fast track program in Washington, they allowed me to come and recruit workers in Chicago. Uh, and we announced it on the radio, um, uh, some of the people that were, uh, and uh, the deputy mayor was fully supportive and us. Actually, we brought buses to bring down workers to give them opportunities again that we had that they didn't necessarily have in Chicago at the time. 
And those are the things that have endeared us to the community and the prime contractors know now that um, GW Peoples uh, makes a difference and, and that CTA and the local government is very pleased with what we do and the way we do it. And so we are getting more opportunities. And we felt like uh, it's not just low price that wins something, but it should be what difference are you making uh, in the community when you have these kind of opportunities. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Am I? Uh, yes, can you hear me, Chairman? Yes, now we can. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Okay. Um, my, last, my final question touched on the personal net uh, wealth cap of 1.32 million and how the cap uh, disadvantages DBEs. Can you expand on why the cap hurts the growth of DBEs and what you think uh, Congress, uh, if, if we should raise that cap? Yes, sir. Um, typically, that cap, where that cap comes into place where it's harmful is in the bonding, bonding program. And if you own, if you're living in an area, the majority of the area of the country, like the Northeast or the Chicago or the West Coast, your home is 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 typically included in that equity the value. Of your home um, what is in, in the 8A program. It's not, but in the DOT programs, a lot of them they are in any retirement uh, programs. So if you've already been established, you, you're you got to be very careful of not exceeding the cap. But in order to get the bonding you need, um, typically they're going to look at if you want a ten million dollar bonding program, you've got to have a million dollars in the bank somewhere before you, um, or you can't identify yourself. Meaning, if it all goes wrong, you get to give up everything you have. So. Um, Perhaps there's a need for legislation where for DBEs, you can, you can either do jobs that don't require the same level of bonding or some kind of tweak to the bonding program. That could be where it is for DBEs specifically, or um, some change on the jobs where the jobs are actually self-insured anyway, a, a majority of them, and the DBEs bonding is covered by the prime bond. Thank you, Thank very, you very much, much John. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentlemen, time has expired. Uh, we are